Hello grade 11 and welcome to your first writing lecture. As you know, we haven't taken any writing yet this year, so it's time to write. In this lecture, we're going to learn about the parts of an essay and we're going to start with the expository essay. Of course, parts of the essay, then types of essays, then we're going to begin with our first type of essay, which is the expository essay. Now, let's begin with what an essay is. An essay is a group of well-organized paragraphs discussing one main idea. The parts of an essay, let's go through them again. The introduction. The introduction needs to include three very important elements. It is your very first paragraph, so it needs to be very attractive to the reader. So, we start every essay, every introduction with something called a hook. Why do we do that? We hook our reader, we catch their attention. Therefore, our first statement should be catchy. It could be, what can we write in a hook? It could be a question, a sound effect, a figurative language like a simile, a metaphor, a personification, a shocking statement, a shocking fact, a quote or visualizing. You could be sitting there and imagining what's going on, on in Mars, for example, and you would be writing that as a hook. Let's take a look at the example here in red. Did you know that adolescents need between eight to nine hours of sleep daily in order to function well and be alert for school the next day? I chose to write uh, my hook as a question. Question and also an interesting fact. If adolescents don't get that much sleep, they wouldn't be able to function well at school. So, obviously, my, uh, my essay is going to be related to adolescent sleep cycles. A statement like this would arouse the reader's attention and make them want to read more. After the hook, which is one sentence or one question, okay, we move on to the background information. In the background information, you have to write general knowledge about your topic, how adolescents aren't getting enough sleep in uh, recent days uh, due to increase in social media exposure, etc. Um, one to three sentences would be enough. And finally, your last sentence, the last sentence of your introduction is the thesis statement. And you know that already, of course, this is the main idea, it holds the main idea of their whole essay. Let's say the essay was about the effects of lack of sleep on teenagers. A good thesis statement would be, this one in blue here, lack of sleep among teens can have negative effects such as low concentration in class, disturbed eating habits, and feelings of depression. So obviously, this is uh, my introduction is done. Each body paragraph will discuss one of those main points. The first body paragraph will discuss low concentration in class. Okay, I write a, an appropriate uh, topic sentence and discuss how their concentration is low in class when they don't get enough sleep. Disturbed eating habits, how they, they uh, don't have breakfast as they should. Uh, they eat very late at night, which could lead to obesity, etc. And feelings of depression, when you know when you don't get enough sleep, you sort of feel down. Okay, so each body paragraph will discuss one of those main points. Moving on, details of a hook. I felt like I should put it in a diagram for you guys to uh, understand it better. Types of hooks, it could be a strong claim, a strong statement, a question, statistics and facts that are interesting or shocking, a joke, of course, if you're writing a narrative or something, a persuasive essay or an argumentative essay, uh, stylistic devices, uh, for a story, you begin with a, with a story, a quote by Einstein, for example, if we continue the way we are uh, with technology, uh, the world, 
world is, for example, doomed, etc. Something like that. A scene description, when you describe a, a breathtaking scene. And I said, of course, a sound effect. All of those could be hooks. There are many more ideas, but the basic premise of a hook is that it needs to catch the reader's attention. So you have to do whatever to catch the reader's attention. Background information. You finished the hook, now it's second, third, and maybe the fourth sentence. It's the information your reader needs to know about the topic you're writing. It needs to be obviously related to the hook. As I said, with the advent of social media, uh, teenagers are staying up very late, uh, uh, not uh, being uh, alert all the time or being distracted. It should not contain any details. Don't support your claim yet. You're not there yet. Just general ideas about your topic. Now the thesis statement, the final or the last sentence of your introduction. It's the main idea of your whole essay. The all the body paragraphs will relate back to it. As I said, each body paragraph will discuss one part of your thesis. A thesis statement, however, should not be written in question form. As you see, it is called a thesis statement. And we know that a statement ends with a full stop. It cannot be a question. Okay, so basically the thesis statement is your road roadmap. Where am I going? An essay without a thesis statement is like a car without a driver. You have no idea what this is going to be about. You write a, a great essay, but I have no idea what you're claiming. What's your main point here? But when you tell it to me in the last sentence of the introduction, I know what you're trying to support here, what you're trying to discuss. The body paragraphs, let's go into details with that. They are the paragraphs following the introduction. Each essay can contain as many paragraphs as necessary. But at the secondary, the secondary level, our essays are usually made of three body paragraphs. So the whole essay is five paragraphs. Introduction, three body paragraphs, and finally a conclusion. The job of the pa body paragraph, again, is to give supporting evidence and or details to the thesis. Now, in the body paragraphs, what do I need to put in each body paragraph? First of all, a topic sentence, the very first sentence of the body paragraph. The main idea of the whole paragraph needs to be stated at the first sentence. For example, it has been proven that lack of sleep among adolescents could result in bad performance at school. This whole paragraph will discuss how lack of sleep will make those uh, teenagers perform badly in class. I will give examples, of course, from real life, from your experiences. If you don't have Google, if this is on a quiz or a test, I don't have Google, how am I going to write statistics? If this is not a homework, if it's uh, a quiz on a test, from your experiences, maybe a friend you know, a cousin you know who doesn't sleep well, because uh, he or she stays up so late uh, on social media and as a result who he or she failed during that semester. That's what you can do. The supporting details, we talked about them. Now finally the concluding sentence. The concluding sentence should wrap up the paragraph okay, and restate the main idea leaving the reader with a sort of a final thought. We talked about the introduction. It needs a hook, background information, and the thesis. We talked about the body paragraph. Each body paragraph needs a topic sentence, supporting details, and a concluding sentence, each referring back to the points I stated in my thesis. Finally, the final part of your essay is your conclusion. The essay, the essay conclusion needs to do three things. First of all, as you see, number one, it needs to restate the thesis using synonyms, of course, in different words. You don't just copy the thesis, you restate it. 
remind your reader of what your uh, opinion was or what your thesis or claim was to summarize the main ideas of uh, of the thesis in one or two sentences not more than that finally you leave the reader with a certain recommendation a final thought a prediction a solution a call for action for example uh, parents need to be alert about this issue uh, of lack of sleep among their teen children and so you're sort of uh, calling for a certain action or recommending but please under no condition should you write I advise you to because that is a very weak statement okay just say parents should school supervisors should teachers should or need to and then express what your thought or opinion is the conclusion, as I always say, is your free space. Let it be strong and on a strong note because you will earn a lot of points in that part of the essay. Okay, now we finished with the parts of any essay you're going to write. Now the types of writing, the types of essay we're going to take this year. Of course, the very first one is expository writing the aim or purpose of the writer here is to explain to inform to illustrate something it's an informative sort of essay of course uh, problem solution essay cause effect essay comparison contrast definition essay uh, for example a definition essay uh, you could be uh, uh, defining covid its symptoms its uh, causes, its effects, that's what an, a definition essay is. And of course, it's an expository essay because it's giving information. Process essay, you, you explain a certain process, for example, photosynthesis. This is a pro process essay. You can write that in five paragraphs. And it's, of course, providing information. Exemplification essay, you speak of uh, one issue and then you give an example etc classification essay where you give uh, examples also about uh, a certain issue or phenomena those are all expository essays number two argumentative writing as we took last year in an argumentative essay the aim of the writer is to stand with or against a certain issue in this writing the thesis statement is the author's position or claim for example, um, let's talk about any controversial issue, um, plastic surgery or cosmetic surgery. In an argumentative essay, you first of all, in the thesis, you need to present your claim. Are you with or are you against? Now, in the body paragraphs, you need to provide your own point of view, your own supporting claims, okay, ideas supporting your stand on this issue if you're against, and you need to also present the, uh, the claim of the opposing person or the opposing point of view, and then you refute it. You give an argument against it. Okay, so in an argumentative essay, you need to present your point of view and your opponent's point of view, and then refute it. Okay, give evidence against it. Show how weak it is. Moving on, persuasive writing, the aim of the writer is to convince the reader and make them adopt his or her point of view. Only the po uh, point of view of the author is presented here and not the opposing point of view. So as opposed to the argumentative essay, you don't present both points of view, you just give your point of view. If you are with cosmetic surgery, all the body paragraphs are going to be supporting uh, your claim that you're against it. You don't present the, the opposing point of view. That's in the argumentative essay. Okay, now in the descriptive writing, you're describing something, you're describing a scene, a city. In a descriptive essay, we use a lot of figures of speech, a lot of adjectives and adverbs, of course. You want to, the aim of this type of uh, writing is to paint a certain picture in the reader's mind. Finally, you have a narrative, the narrative essay, and of course, as we know, the narrative is a story. Types of narrative are biography, writing a person's life story, 
an autobiography, writing your own life story, historical documents, for example, about the about certain scientists or certain philosophers, short stories and novels also are narratives. But what we're going to concentrate on this year are generally expository writing, argumentative writing, and persuasive writing. Okay, of course, don't worry, we haven't gone uh, uh, into the details of everything yet, we're going to start with the expository essay. When we begin with the argumentative uh, essay, we're going to go into great detail of how each and every par part or paragraph of an argumentative essay should or is written, should be or is written. We will start with the expository essay, as I told you. It will be our beginning. Now, after revising all the information provided in this lecture, write an introduction for the following prompt. So, today I talked a lot about the introduction, every single part of the introduction. And I don't want to rush into making you just immediately go and write an essay for me. I want to make sure that you have, I want to make sure that you have mastered the first part of the essay. When we master that, when we fully understand that, we will move on to writing the body paragraphs and then the conclusion. So let me, let me read what I want you to do for this week. After revising the information provided in this lecture, write an introduction only for the following writing prompt. Of course, you know that we start every prompt with a quote, teen anxiety, teen nervousness, has never been as profound as it is in our days. It's severe. Generation Z has it the worst. Generation Z is you guys, the millennials, those who were born uh, 2000 and later. Based on the above quote, write a well-organized essay talking about three major reasons for the increase of anxiety among teens during our times. Make sure you write a suitable title, a good hook, and a relevant thesis statement. In the body paragraphs, of course, you're not going to write them now, but I'm going to give you the, the whole prompt because we're going to write the whole thing later on. In the body paragraphs, support each of your claims with relevant details and examples from real life and your own experiences. So we're going to start with the introduction. Okay, uh, I'm going to go into more details in during the Zoom Live because uh, I need to know if you guys have any questions about this. We will discuss them, of course. And if you need anything, you can uh, talk on our group or you can contact me. Please stay safe until we meet soon. Bye-bye.